experiment to show you today and it's quite a noisy one too. I'm surprised by the number of pupils in other schools who have not seen this. So today what I'm going to show you is Newton's three laws of motion and the linear air track. So this is what the linear air track looks like. It's a hollow tube that's sort of triangular in cross section on this bit and it's got lots of holes drilled in it and we've got a hoover at the other end that's actually acting as a blower and it's going to blow air into this box and out of here are going to become jets of compressed air. And sitting on top of it is a metal glider and this metal glider is going to be lifted up and it's going to hover almost frictionlessly above on the air jets. And we're going to use this to explain Newton's laws of motion. So let's turn it on and see what happens. I can feel the air jets now coming out of here and I'm going to put the glider on top and it's hovering on top of the air. So it's almost frictionless and let's send it down to the far end where there's an elastic band. Now, you may have well seen this sort of thing before, of course, if you've ever played air hockey with those little pucks that float on air jets. It's very similar, but this is only linear. You can't move in two axes. But I wonder what happens if we take the heavy one off and I select a glider that's a bit lighter. So here's a smaller one and let's send that one down. And you'll notice, basically, we get the same thing. It moves almost totally frictionlessly. So for a quick summary of Newton's three laws, and we can easily demonstrate all three on this. Firstly, if no resultant force acts, in other words, the weight of this object is counterbalanced by the reaction upwards due to the air jets, the object won't change its velocity, it won't accelerate, and currently it's stationary. But of course, if I send it down the track quite slowly, when it's traveling along the track, no forces act, so it carries on at a constant velocity. So here it is, coming back to us, not accelerating because there's no resultant force. But what happens when it hits the elastic band at the far end? It changes velocity when it hits the elastic bands because it's changing direction. And if a resultant force acts, a body will change its velocity. In this case, it decelerates and then accelerates and also changes its direction. So that's a change in velocity. But finally, I've got a really weird way of showing Newton's third law. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. So finally, let's do Newton's third law. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. So the forces come in pairs, and um, I'm going to use the blower to demonstrate this. It's a very strange experiment, and one that some teachers might miss. When I turn this on, the motor inside has a rotating part that will rotate in one direction. But there must be an equal and opposite force, so look what happens to the body of the hoover before friction stops it on the desk when I turn it on. And I hope you noticed then that when I turned it on, the hoover turned that way, and therefore we know that the rotor in the motor must be turning the other way. And that's Newton's third law in action. So I hope you enjoyed our brief look at the air track. There's much more we can do with this, but we'll save that for another video. I look forward to seeing you again next time.